just to start off, David, um, going back to last year, um, which obviously wasn't a great year for you with the two uh, Tony Thompson fights, but what were those two fights like for you and having to reassess your career after those uh, two fights with Tony Thompson? It was a big disappointment. I mean, the, the first fight weren't as bad as the second fight because I, all, I always believed that I had gone redeem myself in the second fight but that weren't the case um, you know at least after the first fight I, I had the chance to put things right straight away and I would have been right back on track after the second fight I knew it was going to be a big rebuilding project so it was a little bit more hard to to, um, to, to accept but all in all I mean it was, it was a massive learning experience for me last year and, that, and at the time it was it was horrible and you know it was, it was a bad place to be for me emotionally and mentally but you know it, it's definitely I know it's a cliche like but it's definitely made me stronger today um, and you know I, I kind of appreciate what happens and I don't want to I don't want to go through that again it's given me the, te- the, the determination to make sure that it doesn't happen again and you know it was a massive learning curve for me so it was it wasn't was no good at the time but I think I'm getting close to the point where I'd be able to look back and kind of laugh about it, and I'm not far away from that point. No, definitely. And after that, um, you joined the Sutherland, uh, Sourland brothers. Uh, what was it like, um, the talks with them and uh, joining uh, that promotion? Um, it was pretty pretty straightforward, to be honest. It was um, straight to the point, you know, straight, you know, they let me know straight away what the their ideas were for me and what the plan was about rebuilding me and then getting me through the rankings and it was it was pretty much just a straightforward decision for me to make. Um, I was happy with, with everything really and you know that that's obviously why I signed with them but so far so good. Um, they seem like a great outfit or they're, they're obviously a, a big outfit and you know very professional and Two, two good lads as well, the brothers uh, Nissan and Kalle, two, two cracking lads and I get on with them really well so, uh, on a personal level and business wise, business is business and uh, I'm sure we'll do good business together uh, Definitely, and uh, under them uh, you're two for O, oh. it's been a great start uh, to the year for yourself and um, not only are you two and O, oh, but your fights have been in Germany and Denmark, what has that been like for you, um, going to Germany and Denmark and fighting? And it's, been, those- it's been a big change it's been obviously a lot different to what I was doing at home I mean it's opened my eyes a lot as well to how, how I should be you know doing, having my final preparations for fights when I am fighting in Liverpool because I, when I was fighting in Liverpool I, I was just going about my daily routine like I normally was you know I was sleeping at home spending the day the fight at home lit, but literally just sitting around on my own all day and it seemed, you know, it wasn't a problem because I was winning all the time, and uh, you know, if it is broken, don't fix it. But when uh, when the second Tony Thompson fight came up, you know, that's when the pressure really got cranked up, and mm-hmm. you know, sitting around for days before the fight on my own in my own surroundings it wasn't really a good idea, and that's something that. I've realised since we've been going away because we've been going away a few days before the fight. Mm. I've had a group of people over with me who were really, really good to have around with me to help me switch off, just, just, just help me take my mind off the fight a little bit, and it's helped me in my preparations. Really, when the time's come to switch on, you know, I've, I've done it. I think, uh, I think the first fight back was just an exercise and getting back under the lights. You know, it was a bit of a, a late replacement opponent and. It weren't something that I could daily. It weren't really something that daily wet me appetite mm-hmm. as far as an opponent was concerned. But it was just just about getting back in the ring with the ten ounce gloves on. And the second one against Pala the other week, I think that was more rewarding for mm-hmm. me. You know, come out of that fight and I feel like I've I feel like I've got my swagger back a little bit now. I've got my mojo back, and uh, you know, it's it's fights like that I need where people are going to come to win and mm-hmm. and and have a good go and. They're decent opponents, dangerous punches, and if I can and if I can finish the job like I did and, and put a performance in which was good, which I thought it was, then you know it's only going to help me going forward. No, definitely. And that last fight of yours in Denmark, it showed your uh, never say die spirit as well, because you were of course uh, knocked down, and then you came back and uh, knocked yeah. him down twice in that fight. So it yeah. it showed that never die spirit from yourself. 
it's in the air and that's that's something that people have, have, have had doubts about me in the past. I mean, I've never doubted that. Look, I've always I've always uh, been one to admit that I, I can be hurt by a punch, and because in the amateurs I was on the floor a couple of times and I got up and won fights in the amateurs, but in the pro in the pros I've never been down and got up to win um, against Pala. Although I do believe it was more of a, a, a like a clothesline now on the back of the neck that mm-hmm. took me off balance at the time. I wasn't aware of that and at the time. I, I felt, you know, at the time as far as I was concerned, it was it was a legitimate knockdown. I found myself on the floor for whatever reason and I had to deal with the I had to deal with the you know, the the whole scenario of being put on the floor and getting up the, you know, palatals he had me hurt, he obviously didn't but he, he tried to put it on me, so it was a it was a great it was a great thing to happen to me. That um, although I prefer it wouldn't have happened, it was a good thing to have happened to me. And you know, I came through it, stayed nice and calm. And it, you know, it just goes to show how far I've come mentally. I believe in um, since that last last year. No, definitely. And um, this year, you've already been out uh, twice in action. Um, when can we likely see you uh, next in action this year? And uh, do you have an inkling where that will be in Europe or around the world? Yeah, yeah. We've got we've got June seventh booked in in um, Germany on the undercard of Jim Jim Bremer. I think it's in Schwerin. So we've got that date. So that's only five weeks away. So I'm, I'm back out again, and then I'll have a break in the summer, and um, then you know the. The, the lads are planning on bringing me back over to Liverpool to to start getting me breaking back into that top ten and start climbing through the rankings. So I mean, I've got no idea who I'm going to be fighting yet, um, but it's going to be another step up from from the last opponent. We'll just keep stepping it up accordingly, mm-hmm. and then you know I, I'll be ready to, to burst back onto the to the uh, the scene. Then I think at the end of this year and. It, it's working out well, the rebuilding project, I must say. It, it is going as well as I could imagine it to go. No, definitely. And, of course, we know uh, with uh, British fighters, when they fought abroad, they take uh, really good crowds of them. Have, is that something you've noticed when uh, fighting abroad? Um, some people from Liverpool have been coming and uh, from the rest of Britain have been coming to support you. And have you got any new fans from the rest of Europe? Yeah, I mean, my fights have been pretty low-key affairs as far as you know, uh, the, the, the size of the fight, but uh, a lot of people have still come over to watch me and have bumped into people from all, all over the country while I've been away. And it, it's, you know, it's very flattering that they've um, took the time to come over and see me because at the end of the day, I mean, despite the setbacks I had last year, you guarantee one thing when I fight and it, it is excitement. Someone, someone's going to get knocked out ahead of the way, you know, and, you know, for the most part, it'll be, be me knocking my opponents out. Um, although, you know, that's how it's been. It's less than the one man to beat me, Tony Thompson, although he did beat me twice. So there's the excitement factor with me. So that that's what it puts bums on seats. And, um, you know, I, I have, I've, I think I've made new fans in Germany and Denmark as well because they might, they might have seen someone with such ferocious punch power that I've got. And it is always good to see a big heavyweight puncher and uh, you know that that's what boxing's all about I think no, definitely and you mentioned um, you're hoping to get back into the top 10 this year uh, with that being said what are your aspirations for the rest of uh, 2014 uh, heading into 2015 heading into 2015 I think um, you know I think realistically I'm probably going to fight three more times this year I'm already, I'm already in at number 10 with the WBO so I think um, you know, by the end of the year, I want to, I could, I could be knocking on the door for some type of an eliminator for for a world title. But I think, um, I think, in my position and and in the the situation in the UK, there's bigger fights to be had in the UK domestically than than waiting down for a for a world title shot and going through final eliminators and whatever else. So we'll see how the land lies with with your likes of Chisora and Fury and you know. We'll see what happens there, but um, all you can do is concentrate again on on, on each fight. And mm-hmm. uh, but hopefully by by early next year, I'll be knocking on the door at the uh, the top end of the top ten. Definitely. And uh, you mentioned uh, Chisora Fury, and they've got the bout coming up in uh, July in uh, Manchester. Uh, with those two, uh, how how do you see that one going um, in the, their world title eliminator? I think obviously Derek's going to come in a lot more better shape than he did when he first fought Tyson Fury but I think 
the same is said for Tyson Fury. He's going to come in, you know, better. He's, he's older, more experienced. Both, both of them are. It's going to be. They're both completely different fighters. Um, both good fighters in their own right and in their own way. I just think, I just think Tyson Fury will um, nick it on points. I can see Tyson Fury winning on points. That's that's how I see it going. I think. Uh, he knows how to use his size as well, and you know Derek's a lot shorter than Tyson. Although he he will be hustling and bustling, I think uh, I think Fury will, will win on points. But that's just my opinion. Oh, definitely. And with, with that being said, uh, do you think uh, whoever wins that, um, uh, in your opinion, Tyson? Do you think Tyson can then go on and win the world title off uh, Klitschko? I think he'd give him as hard a fight as he's had recently. Mm. It's the, the size factor with Vladimir Klitschko. Vladimir Klitschko fights for his own size. Mm-hmm. And someone who's got relatively fast hands, you know, I think that's when he's going to meet his match. You know, I know, he, I know Klitschko is a lot stronger than people give him credit for. Mm-hmm. And he's got a, a brilliant footwork and, and his experience and everything else. But I think he'll find his hardest fights against someone as tall as him with, with fast hands. So you're talking... Fury, Deontay Wilder, mm. myself, you know, that type of that type of style could could cause him problems and, and that's why I think that's why he doesn't fight. It's all fighters with fast hands. Um so last tall fighter he fought was, was Vach, but mm. Vach's pretty pretty slow. So we could control him. But um yeah, I think he'd give him a hard fight, but I think I think Lich goes an unbelievable athlete and, and obviously a, a brilliant world champion, so He's obviously the, be the favourite going in. No, definitely. I don't know if you've seen the story today about um, Tyson Fury. Uh, he's been on uh, up to his old tricks on uh, Twitter again, accusing uh, Derek Chisora of taking steroids and he wants Derek to do a uh, number of drug tests leading up to that fight. And you were on the back end of some uh, Tyson's tweets uh, last year. What do you make of them? Do you reckon they're just all mind games ahead of this fight? Well, I don't know. Yeah, but I mean, obviously, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go around accusing anyone of being on performance enhancing drugs because it's a dangerous game you're playing to be accusing people of that. Um, and and I know Derek Chisora. I've known Derek Chisora for a long time. And I know his trainer uh, Charles, and mm-hmm. it's not something that I could see them getting involved in at all. To be honest, so it's probably probably a little bit of mind games trying to unsettle them maybe before before the big fight. Uh, and, it's just it's just uh, typical of Fury, really, just just to make the headlines, I suppose. So uh, it's highly unlikely that Derek Chisora is on, on performance for an answer to us. That's me. No, definitely. And of course, uh, this Saturday there's a massive uh, card in Vegas. Uh, at the moment, Floyd Mayweather versus Madonna. Um How do you see that going? And of course, on the undercard, there's a f- uh, number of fellow British Olympians uh, on there yeah. with Amir Khan and, of course, Anthony Agogo as well. How do you see them two performing on that card as well? It's massive opportunity for a goal goal, isn't it? I mean, uh, you know. I- the thing is with the goal goal, he's taught outside of the box when he was turning pro and not done what everyone else is doing and, and signing with Max Room. He, you know, he's gone outside the box and done, done it his own way really and credit to him for doing that because, you know, he, he's, uh, he's took a bit of a chance in, in doing that, but it's paying off. You know, he's fighting on big, massive occasions, massive shows and massive opportunity to, uh, present himself to, to the big stage in, in Vegas and I think he'll, I think he'll do well. I think he'll put a good performance. And I think Amir Khan has got a tough fight, but it's definitely a winnable fight. If he just sticks to his tactics and uses his speed, I think he'll run away with a, a wide point win on Saturday. Can um, Mayweather? I think Mayweather's fight's going to be harder than a lot of people anticipate. Mm-hmm. Although he's going to win the fight without a doubt, but I think he, he'll have a few. Uh, a few tough moments in the fight because Maidana won't back down to anyone. You know he's not intimidated by anyone, and I think he, he'll, uh, you know, it's not going to be. I think it'll be kind of like Mayweather v Cotto type of fight. You know where he didn't have it all his own way, but he still won pretty convincingly. 
No, definitely. And um, you mentioned Anthony Agogo there signing with Golden Boy and uh, you could be fought, having a lot of his fights in America. You, you, you of course, have signed with uh, the Sauerland brothers and are fighting across Europe. And uh, Martin Murray has uh, signed with um, Golden Gloves promotion over in South Africa. Do you think that's more... Uh, we could see that more with British fighters f- um, signing on with foreign promoters? Yeah, possibly. I mean, uh, it's looking that way because... It- in in the uh, in the UK, you you're pretty much restricted now because of the TV situation to to two promoters and you know the, the stables are filling up day by day and maybe maybe a lot of fighters might think you know I don't just want to be one of many in 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 whichever promotional stable I want to I want to be the only UK fighter in a different promotional stable and you might get you know, diff- treated differently and put more time and effort put into you. But you know, the promoters, the promoters in the UK are doing a great job, by the way. But it's just uh, everyone's got different ways of thinking, and that that was my way of thinking. To be honest, you know, I wanted to think outside the box a little bit, and uh, you know, that, that was uh, why I went with the decision I did. Definitely. And uh, one final question. At the end of May, um, probably Britain's biggest ever boxing event at Wembley Stadium, uh, the rematch between uh, George Groves and Carl Froch. Uh, how, how do you see that one going? Um, I'm looking forward to the, the, the ring size on Thursday night, actually, to, to see what, what's what, you know. Mm-hmm. But um, I, think, I think this time it's going to be... a a similar start to the fight mm. without Froch getting put down. Mm. I think Groves will win the first five rounds and he'll stand and trade with Froch, you know, he'll hold centre of the ring. And I think once he's built a lead up, I think George will, I think he'll, um, you know, protect his lead a bit mm. more, which, which is something he could have done differently last time out. But, you know, he, he was being a little bit too macho mm. and trying to. Slug it out with a slugger, and he could have he could have got on his bike a little bit without running away, you know, just gone on the back foot because we know he can't fight on the back foot groves. Mm. Um, so I think I think to answer your question, I think Groves is going to win on points. Mm-hmm. I think um, Frotcher will probably come on strong towards the end, but Groves will have built up, you know, a, a lead that can't be can't be uh, leveled. Sure. And uh, you mentioned earlier that the the heavyweight division, um, in terms of domestically, there's some great prospects uh, fights there in this country. And uh, the same goes for that division as well, because, again, another former Olympian, James O'Gale, is fighting uh, for an eliminator for the winner of that Frotch Groves match. How do you see James doing? I think James O'Gale, he's had an... um... His last few fights have been pretty low profile and it's been frustrating him because, you know, the, the fact is his fight with George Groves could have gone either way and he's watched Groves go from strength to strength mm-hmm. as far as big fights are concerned. You know, he's, he, James has carried on improving himself and, and he's, he's had some great wins since, but they've been low profile compared to Groves. Mm-hmm. Um, I think he's made the right move in what he's done going to match him because it's, it's set him up for a, for a big fight with the winner of uh, Frotch and Groves and... Mm-hmm. Good luck to him. Because I think you know he needs to be in big fights to, to bring the best out of him. Because he's got he's got a massive amount of talent. You know he he don't give Olympic gold medals away, and mm-hmm. he's proved that he's he, he's already been a success as a pro. He's British champion after nine fights or something, and mm-hmm. European champion st- soon after that. So I think um, I think he's going to do really well, and I think. I think he'd be a harder fight for George Groves than Carl Froch because of just big styles, basically, you know. Um, I think his style would be harder to deal with than Froch for Groves. No, definitely. Uh, well, that's all the question I've got for you, David. Thank you so much for your time. It's been a great pleasure speaking to yourself. Yeah, you too, mate. No problem. Sorry it took so long to get old with me like that. <laughs> uh, no problem and uh, just to say um, really well done on the uh, rebuilding of your career and hopefully the rest of 2014 goes to plan as well thanks mate